Kaya. But this is not easy shit. This is no Disney World. This is... Welcome to Lapland. <laughs> This week we will try to go with the dogs all the way from Jokmok to Saltelukta. It's around 220 kilometers. So during the last days it had been more than 40 meters per second up in the mountain. So it had been quite rough weather up there. Luckily, or I hope, we don't get that because that kind of weather is not nice. And then a small anchor in the front and when you have the small anchor in the front the dogs can relax much more and this is the first coffee break for the guests so I think I had to switch off the camera and help them a little bit with the parking thing Good? Perfect. And Erika, mm. the chances for survival? Uh, it's hard to say, maybe. 50-50? Yeah, 50-50. And you're filming everything? No, no, it's <laughs> only focus. Yes! Thank you. 
So now we have crossed this big lake and we ended up in our old lunch place from the last week. Uh, this week I have Gandalf with me in the team at this dog and he is a super super nice working dog and a super cozy dog but in the start in the morning he's really pain in the ass and it makes me a little bit sad because he makes all the other dogs really eager and crazy and yeah it's very stressful so now I'm going to keep him with me on the mountains for the rest of the season probably so try to make him relax a little bit more but now time for coffee we actually find some firewood on the trail so I brought it it's some dead wood <laughs> it's enough with mine. Yes, please disturb. <coughs> so now we have had the coffee break here and lunch, barbecue some sausage and now it's time to make the dogs ready to go and we have done half of the distance here but now it's time to make the dogs ready to go and having, heading to the next cabin You see, we are on the way into the sunset so beautiful, really beautiful and windy. We will see what kind of weather we will get. The life out here is very much about what weather will we get. The impact of the weather for us is so big. So that's the big thing for us here. Now we are almost at the cabin. Now we're just finding a good parking spot. So, this is how you do it. Look here. Hey, get. Let's hit. Now we just had to find the best way to reach the cabin and that's a little bit more to the left. Thanks, Dad. And then we had to wait for the other ones, so they find the right way. Good. Oh, I go again. Yeah, yeah. Home sweet home, this is our cabin.
Sie bereit? Martin? Sie sind bereit? Please double check. Dann So now we have reached Laxolmen and we are preparing for the dinner and the night with the dog food and everything. And out here on the lake, Claire and Erika is searching for water. It's very thick ice and they have a drill that they <laughs> have hit the rock. And when they hit the rock, they are not so sharp anymore. So I think they have kind of hard work. A little bit windy here. Do you think this is too close to the land? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Matt. <laughs> I think this is good. I think we're nearly there. I think so too. I think so too. I saw how, how deep we are. Yes. Can this change in the sound? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me if you want me to make the last five yeah, we seconds. <laughs> You're not having a good bit. No. <laughs> not Where's after all this work. Yeah. Okay, clear. I think we're near. Almost 20 centimeters, maybe. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Come on, dear. Oh, yeah. This must be near. Yeah. And, and you are documenting <laughs> this? <laughs> I don't want to hit myself in the face. <laughs> it's so low now. Come on, dear. Change the position. Now you can make the high five. Yay. Yeah. You find water. water. That's better than oil, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Incredible! Look at this! Oh, that is amazing. It's so amazing. totally weird. <laughs> Woo! And we did that. You tried to empty the bigger. lake. Sorry. You tried to empty the lake. Yeah. <laughs> if we make it a bit bigger, we can have ice baths. Yeah! You first. <laughs> I need one after that. I'm so hot. <sighs> <laughs> How was the water? Oh, that is so nice. <laughs> so ready for that. You don't need dinner. <laughs> no. Oh, it's heaven. <laughs> So good morning, I've just been to the toilet and 
In this place, there is three toilets. And I must show you how they work. I don't know, but it's just this stirrup line, this plastic here. And with that plastic, you open it down, take what you want to do. No flush, nothing. And it's like compost in the bottom. And uh, it's um, totally okay to use this. I think they are very nice. In summertime, a little bit smelly. Don't look down because you don't want to see what's down there. Anyway, the whole night have been kind of windy and the dog seems to be okay, but we have um, for our first 20 kilometer will be straight into the wind. And now I'm on my way back to the cabin. So right now we are actually on an island, in a very tiny cabin. Like this. Now everybody's out feeding the dogs, packing their sleds, and I'm running around in here brushing my teeth, still in long johns. And now we have to go. We really have to go. <laughs> they are on the way already. I had to go. <laughs> Finally I've reached the other side of the lake and that was something like 20 kilometer on this icy lake with the wind straight in the face. I think we had 15 to 20 meters per second wind. So it's a little bit chilly. Um, we have done this first 20k in less than one and a half hour. Now we're going up a little bit here in the forest and we will have lunch. The dogs are doing fine, but uh, my Rambo, he have uh, breaking in nails some weeks ago. So right now he, he have teared, he have, it's a little bit sensitive. So it looks a little bit badish also on his feet. He has booties of course, and it's not a problem, but he's bleeding a little bit. So it looks a little bit worse than it is. But here we have Troll. Troll, Troll, Troll. How are you, Troll? Are you Trolly, Troll? Troll, Troll. Troll, Troll. Oh, he's so cute, isn't he? Hey, Troll. <laughs> you feel the power when you have the shovel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, well, there's some plastic bags for the fire. Can we check here? Irresponsible. 12. 
for the coffee. Three hundred. Four hundred. Okay, little bit so for them. A little bit more. More, 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 more. Fifteen. Have you now? Oh, yeah. Or are they not? They are not more. Yeah, that's maybe. Yeah, that's good. Maybe yeah. or. <laughs> okay. You get nervous from weak coffee. Yeah. No, oh, oh, so only in Germany. That's the worst thing about travel to Germany. You don't, you don't have gravy. You just have ketchup and mayonnaise, and that drives me in. <laughs> Passing through a village called Lilsele, it actually lived some people here, and there was one loose dog coming and running straight towards us. But when it see, could see all the dogs, it took off from the trail. Actually, usually these village dogs that coming towards our team, they are brave if it's few dogs. But when we're coming with 30 dogs, they are not a problem. It's really, really rare that single dogs jump into our group. And if it happens that the free dogs jumping into our team, our dogs are not interested in fighting anyway. So then I had to do the fight. If the dog is a fighter, I must take care of that. My dogs are not solving that problem. They're waiting for me, so I deal with that. But as I said, most of the village dogs are super nice, it's no problem with them. They could mess up some rope, they could check the female if they are in heat, and then they leave us. Now we have reached Boskonjaure. That's a big lake, kind of big lake, close to Orenjarka mountain lodge. Let's see if the microphone is on. Yes, the microphone is on. It's a big lake close to Orenjarka, so now we have like 12, 14k left to the mountain lodge. And tonight we will have a cabin with electricity, floor heating, shower, and we will have dinner in the restaurant. So this is a total change during this tour from the night before when we have been in small cabins from the hunting and fishing club. And one thing I want to show you, but I don't know if I can do it. Over there, far in the west, there you see Tarakaisa mountain. Now I have a wide angel lens, so you will not see so much of it. But it is uh, Tarakaisa, west of Kvikir. You also see some of the dogs uh, are not pulling super hard anymore. Uh, it has been very fast over the lakes today. And uh, the sleds go really easy now. And my dogs are, right now, they not want to go super fast. And I'm happy for that. They don't know if we're doing 50, 60, 100 kilometer more today, or what if we just finish. They have no clue. Of course, they have a little bit of a clue, probably. But uh, they're holding. No, here you see open water, fucking hole in the lake. I don't like that. I don't like that.
Where? Whoa! Are you happy? <laughs> yeah, we get some other light up there. So this is the cabin we have now. That's the northern light we have now. Up there. You see the northern light? This is how this small lake looks and then out on the big lake it's even more glare ice and that's not good because this is so slippery for the dogs and the sled slides fast and easy and it slides sideways sometimes so you have to be on the brake, you have to be careful, the dogs can slip and stretch, it's hard for the feet for them so we really have to be careful and this start today when you see no trees all the teams are standing just with the anchor in the snow. So this start will be, for me, more stressful. So we tried to, had to try to operate quite fast without stress. And you can know, working fast without stress, the dogs know it. So, I don't know. We'll see. We manage it. Our plan now, going slow start, crossing the lake, going to the south side of the south of the lake instead of middle of the lake where the, it's glare ice. So we'll try to find snow on the south side of the lake. It's been warm, it's been windy, so the snow turned into water and water turned into ice. So 
Maybe skates are better right now, actually. <laughs> so the dogs recognize that it's a stressful start. They probably smell it from me. And you can also hear in the background how they sound, because this is, they know more than you think, actually. Some of the teams start being ready. I don't know if you really want to see this, but I'm really standing on my brake. Full power. Glare eyes. And the dogs just keep pushing. This is not the tourist start. This is why we're working with guests. Because this is not easy doing, going. This is terrible, but last time I looked backwards. Everybody made it very good. I, I must look backwards again. Yeah, they're doing it great. They really do it great. Because this is not easy shit. This is no Disney World. This is... Welcome to Lapland. <laughs> I'm laughing and I, because I'm happy because this start turned out quite well. The dog was quite eager, but it turned out quite well anyway. So I feel a little bit released already. But now we're heading to the south side of the lake and turning to the west. I'm still standing on the brake and the dogs are really, really, really... Fuck. Wanna go. So, we follow the south side now of the Lake Sagat. The trail is in the middle of the lake and super icy. Normally I follow the north side. So this is the first time I'm here on the south side. So it's very, very interesting. It's very beautiful. Very beautiful with the um, cliff there. Now I had to take my dog into the land here. So then we see, look here. As you see, a little bit difficult to understand. Why shouldn't we follow the trail? Hey again! Hey! I have an idea where I want to go. And they have one idea where they want to go. So, and then we try to communicate. Hig, hig! That's how it is. And then my guest coming behind there. And this is amazing because their dog usually follow my trail quite well. And it's no matter if they do a shortcut or choose another way out here they want to come to me so i trust the dogs very much and it's strange the dogs trust me and even more strange the group trust me that's that's actually super strange and what even more strange is that people who are coming back year after year also trust me one week with me and they that's strange, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. 
So as long as the eyes have this grayish color, light gray, bluish color, it's usually very strong. So, and this time of the year, it shouldn't be any problem here. But there is some holes around some stones and it could be holes where the creek come out. So we had to watch up a little bit. Did they come in? They're doing fine. We had to stop for a coffee along the trail and uh, now we're aiming for going through Fikjok and continue to the north. The trail to here was kind of rough. Glare ice, rocks, hard snow and then suddenly very soft snow in the middle of everything. So, in all this steeper uphill, I run and I try to not hanging on the sled and on the less steep, I kicking. So, it's good exercise. This is how it is when you're a team with your dog team. Oh. For each week that goes, I get more and more fit. I can really see the difference. And some guests have been on two tours in a row. And some of them say that they were super tired after the first week. But after the second one, they're much stronger. So this is good. This is the good shit, you know. <clears throat> there is science that show that people who go mountain hiking a week they actually get better health like lower blood pressure lower stress level up to six months after one week hiking in the mountains <laughs> sometimes when you do this you, you wonder what you're doing also you wonder what you why you're doing this to yourself but but this is fun my guests behind me are doing fine again and we have reached the plateau or actually the valley with the 
Tata Sjön is the name of this lake. We are heading towards Portestugan and we very soon will reach that cabin. I'm looking forward to reach the cabin. Make some dog food, make some coffee or tea, sit down for a while. It has been a kind of intensive day today with all the ice. It's, it's very tiring for the mind actually. It's very high tension. I'm looking backwards, I'm worried that someone should crash or so, worried that the dog should be hurted or... Yeah, so... The brain is not relaxing. It hasn't been a relaxed day today. I think we're all a little bit tired, but everybody have made a great job, dogs and people. On the other side of the lake there, in there, that's Sarek National Park. Right now we follow Kungsleden. Nice light. Nice life. Nice life. Really nice life. Or as my friend in Gothenburg would say, hashtag lyckliga livet. That means hashtag happy life or something. Johan Gettner, you should check his YouTube channel. Johan Gettner, I put the link somewhere if you want to see him. He's always doing hashtag lyckliga livet. <laughs> if you never have done this, you probably can't imagine how wonderful this is. And I can't capture everything that's around me, but it's so beautiful. If you're looking around me on the mountain, the sun is setting down, uh, the sun is reaching the higher peaks of the mountains that are on the side of this valley. The snow is good for the feet of the dogs. We are coming closer and closer to the cabin. And it's so beautiful, it's so much I would love to film here, but I'm driving, looking backwards, and then I see how they're coming around the corner behind me there, and the sun is shining behind them. But I had to drive my team in the shadow here and focus on reaching the cabin, actually. almost full moon and uh, it's very bright out here. I'm just checking the dogs now and I'm going to bring Jesse inside and Elsie inside and then brush my teeth and then 
into my sleeping bag. As you see, yes, I've been inside here before. Yes, it's one of the guys with bad fur. So he very often comes in during the night when I'm on tours like this. This landscape is so beautiful. Old forest, surrounded by mountains and uh, small lakes. I really enjoy this landscape. Short uphill, running or kicking. And then on the other side, short downhill, then you have to be back on the sled. and braking because it's not good if you run them too fast downhill So we are in Akse now, I call Christina and check the weather forecast, it's half past five and it will be quite windy here. The weather forecast is really strange because it will be heavy wind here and if you see now, I don't know if you hear but there is wind up there and the wind will increase until nine, ten o'clock but in Saltolukta there is no wind during the whole day. And this is a situation when, um, yeah, I, I get the strange feeling in my gut. So what are you going to do now is that we're going out to the east and we're going to find a road there and the Stina is picking us up and we make a car transportation around. Maybe I'm a little bit too careful because the wind will not be more than 20 meters per second. That's like 60 km per hour or something like that. <laughs> a little bit more maybe. It will not be more than that. But it's straight in the face. And yeah. So we decide that we're going around and not into the storm. 
safety first. So let's see here, we have to change. Oh, yes, uh, we left Akze this morning quite early. And after a telephone call to Stina, I, me and Stina decided that the weather forecast was really strange and unpredictable. And they promised quite hard wind from the north straight into our face. I really hesitate with this decision, but I could also hear the wind on the top of the mountain above the cabin where we were. We're heading out east of Akse and aim for Seitevare. And Stina picked us up there with the car. From that, everything was super stressful. A little bit regret that I didn't film it, but I was so focused that we should reach Saltalukta for the dinner. It's a lot of work to loading up a car with all the sleds, all the dogs, driving 70 km in not high speed with the trailer, heavy loaded, into Jokmok, change some dogs, add some equipment, fill up gasoline, grab a cup of coffee, and continue to Saltalukta, and that's 120 km with the car. But when I say with a car, it's loaded up with a lot of dogs, so we're not driving fast. we very long distance driving, like 60, 70 km per hour. And then on the other side, we loading out everything, loaded up the sleds, putting out dogs and cross the lake on the trail. And that was a fast ride on icy trail in darkness. And it's super important that the dogs stay on the trail because it's open water outside here. We arrived to Salta Lukta, had a super nice dinner. The crew here holding the dinner a little bit extra for us so we also could get warm food. Thanks Salta Lukta, that's super nice. <laughs> this is how it goes sometimes, it's not always as planned. And now I had super nice guests with me this week. Ron and Christian, I really hope I'll see you again. And also Erika. And Claire, it was super nice to have you on the tour. You are really welcome back. And I think the dog miss you also. As you know, a lot of you who have been on tours, it's really hard to leave the dogs here. I'm so happy that I don't have to leave them. I can stay here with the dogs day after day after day and doing tours, living with the dogs. And if I should leave the dogs, I probably should fall in pieces, I don't know. Because they are so touching to you, they really touch your heart. You're working with them, together with them out here. You are really careful to not hurt them or... Yes, it's lovely dogs. And uh, that's actually a big part of the tour, to be in touch with these wonderful dogs. Of course, it's my dog, so I, I'm a little bit um, new, not neutral in this <laughs> question, but they are nice dogs. To all of you who have watched this video, I'm so sorry I didn't catch all this last adventure part, because that had been a nice ending of this video, I promise you. Maybe next time I'm not so focused on saving up the situation, so I maybe can feel a little bit more, but we will see. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumb up. If you want to see more content, press subscribe and so on. See you next video. Ciao.